Welcome everyone, I greet you again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Sorry about that, but uh, I was not sure where this uh, author here was going with this, but I think I see what he's talking about here. He's going through three different people, and this he starts off with this Greek philosopher, so I apologize about that. So let us start over again. So, today is Monday, May 20th, 2019, and the title of this devotional is, What is Man? And the verses are from Psalm 8-4 and Job 25, verse 6. And Psalm 8-4 says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Psalm 8-4 How much less man that is a worm? And the Son of Man, which is a worm. Job 25, verse 6. Before I continue on, the author of today's devotional was, uh, his name is again, um, let's see, his name is Paul Heaton. He's the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Lupton, Michigan. And the first person that he talks about, he's uh, comparing these three people, uh, protagonists, Bildad the Sh uh, Shuite, <clears throat> and... Paul. So we start off with Protagoras, which he uh, lived from 490 to 420 BC, and he was a Greek philosopher. And this Greek philosopher described man as the measure of all things. It is believed that what he meant was there is no truth that is at, that is absolute except what we believe to be the truth. This philosophy is nothing but pure humanism. We are our own gods, Genesis 3. It is up to us to determine what is right or wrong. And of course, this this Greek philosopher, we know that he was not right. And we're going to go into the Bible because we're not our own gods. God is God, and we are to follow him and to live by him, but we're not, we're not gods. <laughs> so this Greek philosopher, he was absolutely wrong. And now we go to Bilhad, the Bildad, the Shuite. And Job 25 had it right. So Bill, Bildad the Shuat, uh, Shuite had it right. And we are nothing more than a worm, the lowest of creation. Paul wrote in Romans 12.3 that a man need, to, need be careful that he doesn't think more highly of himself than he ought to think. Right, we shouldn't be trying to puff ourselves up and trying to think ourselves higher than the Lord. Amen. We deserve nothing but eternal separation from God. And yet this holy God came down to this planet, gave his life for ours, took our sins and punishment, and paid the price demanded of his father. So protagonists, so protagonists, we are not the measure of all things. We are fallen creatures who were without hope and God changed all that. Right, so we're without hope. If you don't trust Jesus Christ, your soul is on its way to hellfire for all eternity. And there's only hope in Jesus. So when you trust Jesus Christ, then you're saved. But you still got to realize that you're still dust and you can't be trying to puff yourself up even after being saved. So again, this protagonist, uh, we are not the measure of all things as he thinks we are. We are fallen creatures who were without hope, and God changed all that. Amen. So, it says, repent and believe the gospel. Believe what Jesus Christ, first got to repent, turn from what you're trusting in, and then believe what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you and for me. Amen. And then we have finally here, it says in Philippians 3, 4b, Paul wrote, If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. He is simply saying, if any fleshly man has a right to boast, I do, Paul said. However, he counted it all loss for Christ. And that's in verse 7. And as nothing more than dung, verse 8. Friend, if it were not for Christ, you and I would be less than nothing. Thank God for Jesus Christ that made us a new man. And we have the references here, Ephesians 2.15. Let's go there and read Ephesians 2.15. 
what it says here, 215. And it says here in verse 15, it says, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Amen. So that was Ephesians 2.15 and 4.24. Ephesians 4.24 says, And that ye put on the new man, which after, Christ, or after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Amen. So let's go back up here and read the context here. Not sure where we should start. I guess we can start in verse 17. It says here, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt, according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are uh, members of one of another. Amen. So, the new man is Jesus, the Holy Spirit, which lives inside of you, if you're saved, that is. Amen. And let's go back to Ephesians 2.15, because there's a context here for this verse, too. So... Uh, let's go ahead and read it. Let's see here. Where should we go? Let's see. Uh, let's try. Uh, let's go to verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that, twin, uh, that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition uh, between us, having abolished in his flesh the en enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God and one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. For through him... We both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Amen. So, that was, uh, we went and read from verse 11 down through verse 18 to get the context of that. So, again, if you're saved and believed on Jesus, then amen. Praise the Lord. He is the one that keeps us new every day. And we don't have to worry about losing our salvation because He keeps us till the day of salvation, till the day we get our redeemed bodies and go to be with him in heavenly places. But in the meantime, we should always be learning and striving to live more Christ-like, being a Christian after we're saved. Amen. So that uh, was protagonist, and he had it all wrong. He was all about pure humanism, thinking that we're our own gods, and it's up to us to determine what is right and wrong which it's God that uh, says what's right and wrong, and we're supposed to go by what he says in his holy word. Amen. So, and then Bildad, the Shuhite, 
had it right. We are nothing more than a worm, the lowest of creation. And Paul wrote in Romans 12, 3, that a man need be careful that he doesn't think more highly of himself than he ought to think right. So, and that's true. We don't, we don't deserve uh, what God gives us. We deserve eternal separation and hellfire. But praise the Lord, uh, by his grace through faith, that we can get uh, get what we don't deserve and be saved. Praise the Lord. All right. So now that we've gone through that, what is man? Nothing without Jesus. And so hopefully you'll put your faith and trust in him today. And now let us go into John chapter 6 and finish up the chapter. And we'll be going through 645 through 71. So John six forty five through seventy one. All right. So let's see forty five. Let me put this down here, and we'll read forty five. Starting at verse forty five. All right. Let's see if you have your King James Bible, if you're able to get it and follow along. If you're somewhere where you can't read it, like if you're driving or at work or something, just listen along. Amen. All right. So verse forty five of chapter six starts with this. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard, and hath learned of the Father, cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, <clears throat> save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Amen. Jesus is that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof, and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? <laughs> but they didn't understand. He's not talking about eating his physical flesh. He's talking about spiritual. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he hath eat it, uh, that, so he that eateth me, even him, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. So not eating it physically with your mouth, but spiritual. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many th uh, therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? <laughs> yeah, we tend to try to think more than we should about certain things and Jesus said just to believe it and not put too much thought into it just to believe it when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it he said unto them doth this offend you what and if ye shall see the son of man ascend up where he was before it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time Many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Sad. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? 
Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the, that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? <clears throat> he spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Amen. So, there you have it. That is the end of John chapter 6. And we read all the way to the end there. So, I believe that's where we're supposed to go. Yep, all the way to the end of verse 71. And next time we'll be starting in John chapter 7. Praise the Lord. So, if you're just joining us, thank you for getting on. And you can go back and watch the entirety of this scope. And tried to explain it the best I could about this, uh, uh, this philosopher, uh, what was his name, Protagonist, from talking about his humanism, thinking that we were our own gods. And then we got the truth from Bildad, the Shuhite, said he had it right, that we're nothing but worms and, and nothing, and we should always be humbling ourselves, realizing who we are and what we are and what God is and who God is. Amen. And <clears throat> give all the praise and glory and honor to the Lord. And stop puffing each other up. And stop stop uh, trying to exalt yourself. Right? Right. So there you have it. <clears throat> all right. So that was our topic, What is Man? And tomorrow's topic will be titled, What does a blind man see? Hmm, what does a blind man see? So we're back tomorrow night, Lord willing, after I get off of work, and we'll cover that topic. Hallelujah. So, hope you'll stay tuned tomorrow night sometime. I'll be on, probably a little later. So, hope you'll join us, join me. Amen. Alright, well, until next time, thank you all for watching. Oh yeah, one more thing. forgot to give you the evening reading. The evening reading is from 1 Chronicles 10 through 12. That will be the evening reading. And then we just did the morning reading, which uh, I came in the afternoon. So, <laughs> anyway, here I am. Praise the Lord that uh, I was able to do one today. So, thanks for watching, and you all have a great and wonderful rest of your day. Amen. And remember, Jesus saves. Believe on him, and thou shalt be saved. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, until next time, bye-bye for now.